So glad you did that. Welcome, everyone. I guess no, everything's been turned off. This is classic, very classic. Um, you should be able to hear me now. There's a little bit of a delay. So welcome to the Kindle Report, where I share my 44 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Nothing like a crash right before going live to disorient everything. So, um, yeah, there's a delay. So you, everybody should be fine. Sorry about that. That just goes along with having the crash come up and everything that just happened to me. I've been spending the last 15 minutes getting the system back up. Should have tested it. A new rule before I go live, I'm going to reboot the entire system again. Anyway, so a lot going on here, folks. Uh, last night, uh, try to, uh, while the room's filling up, uh, we'll, we'll chat a little bit about this. Yeah, definitely classic. Everything crashed. I think it's working. It's not working. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, David. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, just a lot going on. You know, I, I wish I wish uh, this is all I did was do live streams and hang out with you folks. I love it though, so don't get me wrong with that. Um, also, having allergy attacks, it's turned. We went from winter to summer in two days up here in the mountains, so it's uh, pushing mid 80s. Uh, and most of you, that's probably your peak of the of the of the day. So let's try to get into some flow. Where the room's starting to fill up now. But it's very interesting. Uh, last night, I, I wanted, I actually, uh, I wish maybe I'll just try it sometime and do a Twitter spaces, but I was on when the news started to break. I got a badge on my phone sitting there trying to have a relaxing evening. And I got a badge on a phone that Israel had attacked Iran. And so I thought, oh boy, next thing I saw was futures down over 1%. So I went in, spent the rest of the evening watching trading, actually trading. It was an unbelievable opportunity. And I'll try to show you this uh, just so those of you that have the indicators that that V trade came in last night, literally at, you know, at, at this 49.63 level. It was it. There was a huge bar. It was 40 to 50 handle run. It was incredible. Because what what was happening last night when the news was coming out? I was on uh, Maro Nafal. Usually has decent streams when on Twitter X when things are like this are going out and they have decent people on there. But it became very clear that really nothing really happened. Both sides denying all that kind of stuff. We know that when th that type of news happens, it's even real or it's not, or they're posturing, there's all kinds of stuff. Well, it became very clear. I had a, a scenario I've mentioned to you folks before, and I this happened to me back when the Soviet Union collapsed and the, and the wall was coming down, the entire system was collapsing. And back in those days, 100 points down on the Dow Jones, which well, a lot of us still watch the Dow Jones back in the day. Then we're talking, um, what, 1991, 92. And I was standing on the floor with the largest trader on the floor. And we're looking at the screens, uh, staring up at the at the wall. And I'm like, man, what what is the collapse of the Soviet Union have to do with with corporate profits in the U.S. I said, I think this is probably a buy here. Well, I had that flashback last night. It wasn't that it wasn't significant. It was the overreaction, especially in, in the evening and overnight markets. They are very thin traded most of the time anyway. So the the market was just down on on this emotional situation. Whenever I see uh, anywhere in the world, I see emotional tweets, and I've done them as well, like, hey, we're going to break out, and then the market reverses almost immediately. We all do those things, and I, I wish I had the uh, the time. I, I need to actually unpack this like on a separate video. One of the things that I'm planning on doing very soon is, and we'll talk about this here shortly, is the that three three bar trade that I talked about. Now that was a monster trade on the S and P. This was a few weeks ago. We'll talk about it. 
but I'm going to do some videos and I may be opening up a new channel called Wave Tech. I'll let you folks know. And it's going to be about the using the software for portfolio management and then education on the indicators. So if you don't have the indicators, it's kendallreport.com slash indicators. You can find out how to how to get involved there. And so but the the whole point of of the what I'm talking about here is when you get this big giant news and the market responds, and I I know I've talked to you folks, those of you been around uh, been around for a while. No, I talk about those those reaction trades, uh, like um, whatever GDP, uh, maybe unemployment numbers, the big reports that everybody's anticipating, and we get that big spike where you fade the spike. Last night was a fade the spike moment, and the augos on the hourly had the V set up. There was all kinds of stuff. And I didn't get in at 49.63, but I can tell you uh, around 49.80 or so, I was all over that, a little bit before that. But for the most part, there was a little bit of a basing period that happened. And then the uh, markets uh, just started to to rally back. And all of a sudden, we're coming back to 5,000. We're in a 90 handle. Then we're uh, 50, 20. I'm trying to write the sub stack last night. And and I wanted to uh, re I actually rewrote one of the sections completely because of the dynamics of what just happened. And I'm uh, a couple things that I'm going to try to unpack here today. And in context with what I've been saying, I know two days ago on Wednesday when I did the live stream, I was talking about all the headlines coming into April, uh, where uh, warning signs were everywhere that this market was about to shift. It went a lot faster than anticipated, including what I'll show you here in a few minutes. And I talked about this in Substack last night, is that we traded all the way down to the 21 week moving average on the S&P, just on that spike. And we're still under pressure. We're play, trading uh, 5,009 right now in the futures. And that, uh, I'll explain what, what happened. We, we are in a big liquid, liquid liquidation phase, and that is, I don't want to sound like Joe Biden there, hang on. Uh, but anyway, um, the we're in a big liquid, liquidation phase in the markets right now. This is a Friday after the close today, about two hours, we're, we run our models. Once we get all of the data, we collect our data from our data vendor, we'll run those models. And that's, I believe we're going to see a monster selling coming in. I don't think we're going to go to a negative, but I'm expecting thousands of symbols to be sold. And we've been working towards this if you've been following that. But back to this this spike scenario. When you see these big, big reactions, this is for a trade. This isn't a, for a position trade or anything like that. But there's a scalp that can happen. The last night was absolutely amazing because it rallied, ended up rallying back to uh, from 49.63 all the way to uh, 50, I think 50.28. And so that's just, you know, that's a monster move. That's like 70 handles. And we're talking a couple hours time. And uh, as the news came out, it became more and more obvious. They don't even know if Israel did it. They think it might be a faction in, inside. I haven't followed the news since last night. So maybe this is all out. And But it, it definitely was one of those opportunities. And it takes uh, a lot to go in uh, some of those and understanding, but I'm gonna show you the setup here shortly, what was there. And it was incredibly obvious. The algos were all forecasting that the market was going to recover. So there was a really good trade. And there's been some amazing trades today, 25 and 35 handle swings that we've seen. Of course, when we, when, by the time we get here and we have opportunity to do some live trading, then the market starts to stabilize. Although it's it's trying to trying to print back down, we're down at uh, 5,008. There's there's some key numbers I'll talk about. Let me, um, yeah, I, I think one of the let's talk a little bit about the geopolitical uh, risk that's out there. 
And the, this environment that we're in, and I've been talking about this, sets a, a lot of uncertainty. And it's, I think what we're probably seeing right now as we come into the last hour and a half of trading is nobody probably wants to be long any of the short-term traders. You kind of got to flatten out for the weekend. You got the having event, uh, um, having event on the Bitcoin coming, which I think is a a dud. I really do. I don't think there's much going to come out of this. It's probably it's like too advertised, too too uh, visible to cause any kind of event. And not just advertised, but everybody knows it's scheduled. It's not like there's no surprises here. So if there's probably. Uh, there'll be a, a war of of traders, but uh, the main thing that I'm I want to discuss here is that when these events happen, and when you especially in uh, these unexpected events, like it was a black swan. If there would have been mushroom clouds in Iran, that would have been a whole different story. Okay, uh, there wasn't. Matter of fact, uh, I, there was somebody on that. Uh, Twitter space last night that lived 20 miles from where this one of the bombs supposedly went off and didn't even hear it. So, um, you know, who knows what's real anymore when we're when we're on the Internet. But the it, it uh, I think it was very factual and everybody started to realize, wait, maybe nothing really happened. But what we're dealing with right now. So let's come back. That was that event. Now what we're looking at. And I've been talking about this for a while. I mentioned on Wednesday, we went in through that outside reversal on the monthly chart, which is pretty significant. It's happening on futures. It did not happen on the cash. I'm trying to try to, I've seen that happen before, but the uh, futures are definitely in a, a huge outside bar. And the way it closes, we've got, Really, we've got two trading weeks to go, so we could rally all the way back and be at 5,200. I don't expect that to happen, but I do see from what we're looking at right now, and uh, let me get this go on a split screen so you can see uh, what's going on here. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just put this up while I'm talking, but uh, we're just seeing uh, the activity that we're seeing right now trading down at 5,009. Let's forget that this whole news thing happened. We would probably be, probably be trading at these levels anyway. We printed down to 50, uh, 38 yesterday. I've been talking about the possibility of testing 5,000. We've now done that. We went beyond it, but based on really uh, on news that wasn't factual, I think in the end, you you'd have to say, but we would have been trading down most likely anyway. And I mentioned that if we go back to Wednesday, Thursday was to be an up, up day. The Augos were suggesting that we're going to see an up day. And what we got was a uh, up day early for about three hours. And then all this noise from geopolitical and other things came up uh, and, you know, it just reversed and made a new low on this sequence. So, uh, that stuff is going to continue to happen. The WaveTech database, which, uh, matter of fact, that, let me just put that up on screen while we're talking about stuff here. Just trying to get to the right. Bear with me one second. Everything's still messed up from earlier. I apologize. Not everything's set up as it was supposed to, so bear with me while I put this up. Okay, sorry about that. A lot of broken stuff around here. So uh, this is the probably the best view. This this is the hourly chart. And I saw this coming. If you look at what the algos are telling us, there's more downside here. We Where are we on the clock right now? We are about 20 minutes away from the final hour. It looks like we're going to 
continue to forecast lower prices, and we're likely to see not a retest, but there is there is a, a potential to come back below 4,900 down into 4,990. So we'll see what we can get set up here. But th what I'm trying to tell you is, if we go over here to the weekly chart. Let's just bring this up full screen. Here's that hit on the 21 period moving average I was just talking about. So we traded down to this level. That is extreme. We still have, if I bring the PPMs, we still have a 0.41 PPM value, which tells us there's about a 60% chance that we'll stay above that line. Right now that's 49.84, it's still rising. And it goes to the this pattern that I show you folks all the time. This is probably what will happen. And I guess I um, we have another event coming in next week. We're going to start to see earnings come around for first quarter. So we've got plenty more information to to digest. And this continues to be uh, just a really dynamic environment. Uh, I'll, Go through it in a minute. I saw, you know, Nvidia is collapsing. I think it was down six and a half percent. We're seeing Tesla. We're seeing all these, all these stocks that have been pumped up. You know, Tesla's real valuation is probably about thirty dollars a share if you evaluate it for what it's really worth. I know uh, folks like to put a lot of uh, valuations on it, but as a pure car company, it it is not worth that much. Um, So, um, but this this is what I, I show you this all the time, and this is what's likely to set up here with the S and P. This upward, we've got this upward shape to the twenty one. You can see it starts to roll off here, and then ultimately we, we've got a cross of the 21 crossing down below the this is what's being forecast it has not happened yet but typically what what we'll get here is that the markets will end up and I don't know how many times I've shown you but I'll keep doing it these little triangles that form around the moving averages this moving average may flatten out more than what it's being projected but this is going to be your range where you're likely to trade and continue to slope uh, follow the slope of that 21 period moving average. Like I said, it's 0.41 is trend mode. So you should have all the characteristics around here. So last night's low, we may retest that low, but around that 21 period moving average weekly is going to be the number that you're going to want to watch. And that's uh, 49.84. That's where it is right here on this bar right now. And like I said, I would expect a rebound from these levels, nothing drastic, but we do have earnings and I've already seen, uh, look at the airplane, earn, uh, all the, you know, all of the uh, airlines are coming in and they're coming in with really good numbers here. And so that's the beginning of the, of the earnings. So there's going to be a lot to digest, but I think that's exactly what this chart is going to be is a consolidation. And and basically just digest this big rally up. This is the first time since the October low. This entire upward sequence right here. This this whole sequence up. Uh, there's been one little correction here. This is the first significant, and I would expect to see some kind of pattern set up where we get a right shoulder. And then maybe we end up over here, and that ends up. This this timing may be drawn a little bit off, but this would put us all the way. This is July, where I just drew up this line, roughly July, and this is May. So I think we probably maybe get a little little bounce here at the end of this month, and then we set up. But we end up if we look at everything here, we end up with some kind of some kind of uh, wedge that goes to this bigger wedge here off of this 40 period moving average. So we start to see those patterns set up and it's just going to be really choppy. So there's going to be trading opportunities. 
I've said before that you want to be probably doing covered rights on rallies, uh, selling calls against your positions, downsizing positions, doing something to moderate that. And those of you that have wave tech, then you're going to be just following the signals. And there's a number of things you're going to be able to do with those signals. And hopefully next week, I'm going to be able to get the training and some other ideas going on wave tech, which I think is going to help a lot of you folks that are that are using that product. Yeah, and uh, I see uh, Mark is just asking about oil, and we'll, we'll take a look at that. The, um, the oil just spiked up with everything last night, and when you that's just the inverse of what I'm talking about. So we'll go through crude and, and discuss that. If I don't mention it, uh, who is that, Mark? Make sure you, you ping me when I get down the road, because sometimes we get down some trails and we get a late start. So we only have an hour and 15 minutes left. Yeah, I'm just looking at some comments here real quick. Okay. So I think the intermediate trend is being set up. We're going, my, like I said, I don't know where the uh, database, let's go over and take a, take a quick look at the uh, database here real quick. Uh, right now, this is the intermediate, we're 78.18% long. And if we, if we go up here, this chart represents, this is our, internal chart of uh, roughly of about 6,000 stocks. And this is starting to show where it's starting to moderate up here. Once again, it, the 21 period moving average is right in there. So we're looking at coming in and just consolidating up in, in these upper bands here, even uh, from our database. So we, we build our own indexes and the basically it's a price weighted chart rather than a cap weighted. So it just takes the average price of all the stocks that are in these indexes right now. Like I said, it's probably in this particular, what's called the VPM index is probably around 6,000 symbols, just rough numbers. So it's very expansive. It's almost like, uh, it's, you know, I'm trying to remember the name. It's been so long since I've, no one talks about it anymore, but they, uh, there's a 5,000, I'm, I'm spacing out something 5,000, but it's like that. It's a very broad-based index, and much so than anything else that's out there. And, but you can see that that's happened. If we come over to the, the daily, though, just real quick, you'll see a number. You can, we had a buy signal, this little, not sure how well you can see this. Let me just see if I can bring that up. Yeah, it's going to be best on this previous page, but this this pattern that, that's here is showing the rollover, and this is probably an A leg that we're seeing if we look at everything. So that's why I'm looking at that wedge on the on a weekly charts. We're we're just uh, this is not a moment to I would say to panic or anything like that. Uh, really, it's this is a place where you adjust some of the positions. You're taking profits. You're you're going to do those type of things. I often use this term called rotation, and that's what you want to do even with your portfolios. Now, WaveTech does that automatically. It's going to rotate you into cash and then keep the stronger assets that have better trending profiles than the others. But for the most part, that's what you should be doing as individuals is just trying to position yourself. And you know which which positions are uh, more risky than others. So just scale back or write calls against them. Do something that has some protective nature. Uh, one of the theories that I have promoted, and you can, if, you can just go on Google and Google advance and protect. 
anybody and everybody that says advance and protect got that from me. A lot of those firms are are companies that are even our customers or have been customers, but they've adopted that, those words. And th that is all that means is that we're, when we say advance and protect, we wanna participate when appropriate. So when the markets are trending, when, and then we wanna raise cash when they start to change trends or the trend ends. And in the process that's uh, on, this, on the screen here, the uh, WaveTech, it does all that for you. So it's adjusting the the exposure and changing the beta to to the market by adding cash. And the beauty is for years, folks, we've we presented this process as a way for uh, folks to uh, absolutely get uh, to protect their assets. But what it what it does is it actually makes uh, these adjustments so you don't have the net exposure. So even if you raise 40% in cash, the beauty is right now cash pays good money, paying five plus percent. And so this is, when I started this company that offered this software back in 1998, rates were about where they are right now, give or take some. This is where we are right now, and rate structure is pretty much a normalized rate. This is where rates belong right now. And so what we're uh, looking at uh, here right now is so cash is good. Cash is earning 5%, so you can't, you, on an annual basis, so you can't really beat that kind of protection. So not only are you getting beta protection from, from the actual exposure to the market, you're getting paid for doing it. So, you know, there's there's an argument where I wouldn't go to 100% cash. I would definitely be scaling back though. And I, I think those are some things I felt necessary to be able to talk. Yeah, um, so uh, I see uh, Key is saying that uh, consolidation range, uh, being between the 10 and 21 holds uh, barring. Yeah, geopolitical situation could get big, but I'm telling you, um, we're not seeing the breakdown and the database that I have up on the screen right now, when we get the update, if this, uh, when we get the update tonight, it's gonna start to really reveal how many stocks got really hammered and how many trends were broken. Because WaveTech is, is a trend following tool. So it is looking at trends, not looking at necessarily moving averages are on the, on the page, but it's looking at more of the underlying trends being evaluated through the PPMs and different elements, <clears throat> excuse me. Now we also have on every stock in here a statistical map. So all of those numbers are coming into play going, what the probabilities are for trends to extend. And typically when we get a big break, and I would say so far this month and, and two weeks, this is a pretty decent break. Uh, we're not that, you know, we could easily get down. I mentioned, uh, this is dangerous folks. I mentioned the 49 handle a couple of nights ago. And I'm gonna say a number right now, so beware. Uh, 47.50, 47.75 would be a 10% decline. It's starting to look like we're going to head to there, but not before we do this consolidation and roll over. Now, like, uh, just to tie everything together, I've been saying, is we also have the earnings coming out. So we're gonna get the classic earnings consolidation. So we've got several weeks of earnings coming out. And I believe, Google, some of the big folks are coming out with earnings. I'll, I'll be talking about that in, in Substack or Sunday night's video. And uh, yeah, um, listen, uh, this is just phase one. Uh, somebody said, hey, great call on Tesla. This is phase one for Tesla. They got big, big problems. That whole EV adoption thing is a joke. And you wait till you see the earnings next week it's going to start to be revealed, I believe. If all you gotta do is go to your local dealer, uh, about six, that's probably, now it's a little bit more, uh, maybe eight, nine months ago, 
I went and I went to Mercedes. I thought, man, if I was going to get electric, I'd probably get the EOS. I went and looked at that thing, totally unimpressed. Did not drive it, but I was totally unimpressed with the car. Uh, and it at least had reasonable interiors, unlike the, the Tesla. So, But anyway, that was a really easy call. And in fact, I could put one of my associates on. I've been screaming at myself for over a month and a half before I did that that analysis to because that that was obvious for a while uh, that this thing had rolled over and there were going to be some challenges. So more on that as we come through. Uh, we'll talk about it after the. Uh, um, yeah, you buy Tesla here. See how that works out for you. Um, so anyway. Um, Yeah, so let's uh, let's go back over. I think. Yeah, so we're down. Here's we're under that five handle. Somebody just said, um, "Let's see if we can set up something. Maybe we can pull off a trade here." We got. Yeah, we see we're coming into that hour. Yeah, this is a really good timing. Thanks, uh, FF, for saying that. Or key, key was the one, yeah. Hey, listen, uh, Tesla. I mean, the the plaid is uh, is is fast, right? They're just not a replacement for ice cars. Anyway, let's see if we can set this up here real quick. I have over here my five second chart, so I may have to rubber, uh, look over to the side here and we'll, we'll go on screen. But here we are, let's go hourly. Yeah, so this this is gonna be a problem. Uh, we just got new FIB targets on the downside and they are 49.25, 48.75 and 49. And we've got the, uh, if you look here, the PPM1 is about to slice through its second derivative. So we might get a little bounce, but uh, this market could collapse into the cold, uh, into the close, because what we might be watching here is the final hour, hey, square up the books, don't, don't go, go home long. Yeah, and, and I see John B. going, hey, I'm st still up in my T-bills. Exactly. I mean, listen, if you had, if you really look at where you want to place money, there's not a lot of places right now. And T-bills, parked in T-bills is not a terrible idea. Yeah, so uh, WaveTech, uh, you can go to, uh, somebody said, how do I get WaveTech? It's $3.23 a day, 97 bucks a month. It's kendallreport.com slash WaveTech. Just all one word, Wave, W-A-V-E-T-E-C-H. And that'll you can find out a little bit more about that. That's an, that's an old funnel. We're about to revamp everything. And yeah, we're also working on, on a new app, folks. So uh, it, there's some exciting stuff about to come. Just everything takes so long, takes longer than you think. So uh, let's see if we can set this, see if we can get this set up a little bit. I'm going to try to set this so I, I can move between my my screens here. Look at the volatility, uh, crazy. Uh, if you can see this level two, we just printed 96. We, we did three and a half handles in the spike. Let me let me go here. So I've got up on the chart right now, a five second chart, and I'm not really oriented uh, to pull the trigger here, but it does look like 
here we are at 5,000. We're probably going to get, we are right now, let's go to a five minute. I'm going to jump around a little bit. Yeah, five minute looks like it wants to turn up. We do have a pivot. You can see some red dots, maybe. I know it might be small here, but right where my cursor is, um, 50.16. We could, could rally back up to that level. Looks like a little bit of softness will follow the slope and then possibly get maybe get a little rally back. It's already it printed down to 46, like we're 50.03. Let's take a look at this chart here. And yeah, that was, yeah, the pretty good area about whenever somebody said we're about to get a spike, that was probably right around the time. Should have been buying, but there's some work to be done here. This pattern here on the five minute. Now this, uh, what I've got up here right now is trade station. And these are the wave tech webs, which you get with the indicators. And, but we're seeing a, an attempt to set up a little pattern here that could rally us back, but we're gonna have tons of resistance right here around somewhere between that 14 and 22 level, but that's 20 handles. So there, there's some, there's some potential here. But we're just about in into that that final trade here. We're looking at 42 seconds. So let's go over to the hourly and let's see what kind of see if we cut through the uh, second derivative here. And if we get through that, then that's probably going probably going to set up another sell. We're trading right on the STX level. Let me just bring this, trying to get all oriented here very quickly. Yeah, um, this this pivot is way up here at 5041. It's not going to be in play. Okay, we just got, we got it. We did cut through the see if I can bring that up. You can see right here, we cut through the second derivative here. And it looks like we'll probably get some more downside. So maybe a negative move into the into the close. And we have some Fibonacci targets that would be a new low from last night. It's pretty weak at the moment. Yeah, I don't know if I can get because of the crash, I'm not set up fully, but let's just see. So my favorite chart for intraday trading is this five second chart. Um, it's, it's trying to trying to rally up a little bit here. Yeah. I've, Order filled. All right, so I went ahead and put put something on here. Maybe. Order filled. So this is for entertainment purposes. I've had a huge day. So right as I got in, we, order filled. We we got this rejection right out of here. Let me take a look. Yeah, like I said, this is not. Yeah, I'm trying to buy that dip and they're just running away from me. I've got 15 on. I'm just trying to scalp out with $1,300. I've got an order just above in the market grid here. Let's see if I can put this back up. We have some Fibonacci's trying to make a little turn here. It's pretty bouncy in here. I'll try to explain what's going on. I've got an order right now. I've got 15 on. 
I've got order a couple, filled. I, I just bought some more. Should get a bounce here. I'm canceling uh, offers, and now order filled. Okay, I, ju I just I got filled. I didn't get that other order canceled, but that's okay. Order filled. All right, so I just made two grand on that little bounce. So that was just a quick scalp, but you can see, let me go back, folks. It's kind of hard to, I don't have all the screens set up just right. So we got a little bounce here, just played that little scalp. And I think I had 25 on and all I needed was a few few bips to, to get there. Um, Yeah, I think there's a little bounce before. Um, yeah, I should have been shorting, but I went long and made two grand. So, um, yeah, this is just a range bounce. So you can scalp in here. You, you have to understand, I'm I am an expert scalper. So, yeah, so we're we're still printing up here. A one o two. Let's take a look at here. Yeah, so this. This is a, a pretty decent pattern here. I could have stayed long with this a little bit, but the uh, the patterns that are setting up here, this is probably if we can print up to up to about 05 or so, then we can turn this pattern and probably get a rally back. Still looking for maybe a, a little bounce. There's not a lot here, folks. So I don't know if we want to distract uh, from that. I, I think. Uh, I'll, I'll take a, a vote from uh, um, a vote from you folks. Would you like me to? Would you like to go over some stocks or play around with trying to do some scalping and me talking about what's going on? Give me give me some feedback here. No, that's that's easy stuff. You just gotta you have to have a quick finger. Thanks, Carly. Scalping, scalping. Yeah, we'll do Nvidia before stonks. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't have. I'm not set up to do uh, BTC scalping. Yeah, there is no such thing, Sid, <laughs> as a long-term investment. You're... All right. So we're back at um, 99. Let's do one more scalp, and then we'll we'll just do some stonks and some other stuff. Yeah, that may have been the, the little bit of a pop I was looking at. Let's come over here and look at the hourly. Last hour is low. Let's, let's set up some stuff here. Last hour is low, 92. We're 96. Yeah, I should have. Uh, yeah, look at this. We're already, already printing it down. And the low overnight, 63. We came down into these FIB targets. This is a five second chart. Now we're getting upward FIB targets. We are uh, just, to ex uh, I'm gonna make this full screen because I wanna talk about this. If you have the indicators and you have a premium account with real time, you can get this five second. We've already hit FIB, FIB target one. FIB target two is about to, is trying to be hit. You see the all the, Algos are trying to project a little higher. The one that I watch, for the most part, I won't take the others off because I want to use them later, but is this bottom one, the 200. When it starts, the, the key to catching a, a decent move is when these, these dotted lines here, let me draw in what I'm doing, and of course something will happen, but that's okay. Let's, take a, let's, take a, let's do a quick lesson on, on this.
Yeah, so a couple things. When you start to see the these dotted lines over here, which are right here, when you start to see them forecasting above the 200, then that will tell you there's about to be a shift. And we're trading right on the 200 right now. And, and so you watch for these lines to start to make a move, but more importantly, down here, right down here, we want to watch for this 200 to start to show that it, it is going to maybe do something like this. Then you know you can you can buy and then you end up getting some kind of one, two, three pattern, something like that. That that's that's kind of what I when I'm looking at, look, we just got some fib targets up here. We're getting fib targets. I, let me change this drawing tool. So getting fib targets doesn't mean we're going. We got lower fibs and higher fibs, indicators flat, little positive here, flat. So it looks more like what the conclusion you would draw from this is that we'll stay most likely in somewhat of a range. Uh, we, could, we could print up or down from here. This is literally uh, a coin flip. So what we want to do is wait for probabilities to set up. So we are we are starting to get a little upward slope. The fib stopped calculating this little move down here. Uh, kind of blew that. So you can see the algo is now starting to flatten out, project lower. We're seeing a flattening of the 200 so we're not getting anything and this is a five second chart so let me let me unpack this chart a little bit if you're new so if 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 we go out we bring this over we can see what's going on here okay i've got this top numbers were the dots. These are being projected. It's showing that we're trying to rise over the the 200 a bit, but it's really not until about 12:15, and it's current. That's about five minutes out. So these numbers down here, I should have these all set the same, but I did have before the crash. But the Patterns are suggesting really kind of moderate sideways hovering around this 10 period moving average. We've got some new FIB targets coming in above the markets here at 06, 506. So we're not really getting the the follow through. It looked like we we're going to kind of collapse down to 92 and go down, but really what we're looking at is. This is one of the best things I've ever used. And I can tell you it's been about a year. It's been about a year since I started using these. And literally the, the best for understanding what price movement is going to be. You can see we're kind of getting uh, some little small, if you can see my cursor here, projections to the upside. We're getting some, some new FIB targets here. They're 02, 03, 04. But this is just a projecting sideways range. So these are one of the uh, the best way to look at this five second chart. And I've seen folks talking about the uh, uh, come on guys, let's stay on the markets. Shelby's <laughs> am I boring? It, just let me know. Let me know what you want to do. That's why I asked. So I want to set up a, a scalp. But you can see now we're starting to get those forecasts above that 200. So markets are going to want to seek. Right now, it's projecting out at the moment of, uh, let's see, about five minutes in the future that the averages will, will hit this 06. Maybe we'll start to get some new new numbers here. It looks like the 200 is is trying to, to turn up as well. Let me just move this. And get it so we can see the bars. But the... 
Not a lot here. It looks like maybe in the next two minutes. Here we got some new FIB targets to the upside. So we're, we're still seeing that. Let's let's bring up so we can see the order book here. So yeah, look at this four. So I think that, you know, um, this is what I was talking about. We should get, a, look at this, it's already going up. We just hit FIB target one on the five second. So yeah, they're, they're juicing this thing. So what I'm trying to explain to you that that was a pretty good scalp trade potentially between 02, 06. But we, we're, here we are, we hit FIB target two, here's seven prints. The top target here is 0780. So we're, there we go, 0775, 08, there you go. So basically when we, this is what I was trying to show you, when these WTRs are forecasting above the 200, that's usually a really good move. Here's the 09. Let's try to go back to the hourly chart and just see if we can. So this is what I was talking about. We probably get a, a bounce back a little bit. All of a sudden, the algos have, uh, the PPMs have updated here. We we were showing that it was penetrating through this, this level. It's now adjusted. We're hovering right along that second derivative. Does look like you know this this is the final hour, so we're really not going to get any more out of this than what we've already seen. And you know, let me go back to five second. Yeah, so now we're seeing algos trying to turn back up. We have this. Okay, we just got some new fib targets on the upside here. We're now getting targets for 12, 15, 75. Order filled. Hang on. Order filled. All right, this may be, I came in a little late on this trade. Back to O3. Order filled. Let's just see what we got here going. Order filled. Little choppy here. Not sure I'm going to be able to pull this off. Let's take a look. Yeah, this one's getting out of control. Order, order, fill. See what this algo is looking like. Yeah, I kind of got myself in a corner here. See if we can bail out. So back under 5,000.
little focus here. A glimpse of green. Order filled. Ah, made three grand. So we've managed to get five grand out of the two trades. So let's just go back to this. Let's review a couple of things. <clears throat> yeah, there's more in this trade. I, I just scalped out the, uh, basically what I was trying to show you is we, we're just locked in these, in these trading ranges. So you can, that's why I bought additional Contracts coming down. So I think I ended up with 25 on quick scalp. There was more, a little bit more in there, not a lot, but um, scalping uh, is different trying to find a you know, a big swing trade, then, you know, this is just coming in and scalping a little bit. We missed all the big swing trades earlier. Yeah, Chris. Uh, it. Yeah, there's there's a lot of capital. I can't I can't show you guys, but it it's all good. Um, but one of the things. Uh, uh, let me come back up for a second here. We'll just do a quick lesson, and we'll go to some stocks. Yeah, one of the things I used to show. Uh, I talk about this all the time. You want to be able to scale in and scale out of trades for the most part. Uh, one of my old mentors, we got to go back into the 1980s, is, you know, you want to be able to find a range that you want to buy. No one's going to buy at a perfect price. So about, this is a rule of thumb, probably 80%, maybe 90% of every trade you put on, you'll see red before you see green. And you just need to know that, and, it, and if you try to pre, I never use stops, by the way, on anything. I'm not, just never have uh, for a very long time. Every time I do put a stop on, I just laugh when it gets hit. And I, because I knew, A, I should have taken profits or just got out, okay? Whenever I'm feeling like I have to put a stop on, you probably intuitively knowing that you're wrong, okay? Uh, it's kind of an interesting scenario. And I should, there's probably some videos that I should do that I don't think this is the appropriate time to uh, to talk about this, but I'll just mention just a little bit more, is that the, the psychology of trading is really big. If you have the right tools, basically we'd establish that we had a range bound market and you can scalp. The, those are the best markets, by the way. To, it doesn't matter uh, if you identify a range and you identify it reasonably early, when it starts to go back and forth, I, I can't remember, but I think we had three weeks, two weeks at least of ranges on the S&P that it was literally flatlined. And that is um, uh, when you get those, you, you know, you buy low, sell high and you, you trade that range. And if you're disciplined about it, then you can really do some uh, 
crank in some pretty good money. But it's it's when you start. Uh, so the psychology behind trading, when you put a trade on, you've got to have enough confidence. Hey, I see the probability setting up. Let's do it. And and then I have a range where I will I will buy as long as it's staying within that range. And typically, I'm going to cost average down. And one of the largest traders I used to work with on the floor was a master at this, and that's where I, I learned the technique. It Sometimes you, you really have to get fairly aggressive, and it all c comes down to how much capital you have. Somebody said, have a thousand hour account, probably not gonna be able to do this stuff. But the bottom line is you want to scale in, and then, and then when you see these metrics being hit, because look, I'm just looking at screen. I looked away. We're back at 5,002. We we went down to like 98 and up to 05 again, and that's what we've been doing for a while here. We a little higher in some cases. Uh, we got up a bit higher, but for the most part, that's the range. And when you see those ranges, you can really just scalp the heck out of them and just I. Uh, in the old days of the live room, I used to just say, I need to steal some money here because they're, they're just giving money away. And you have to not buy when it's breaking out because that's going to get you to buy the high. And then you're, sell, you're selling when it's coming down at the bottom. You want to invert that and you want to be buying kind of when it doesn't feel comfortable. And then when it, when it starts to feel comfortable, you sell. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> me one second here. I'll, I'll put this on screen for you. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. That was a Skype call. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's get back to it. Yeah. Um, anyway, the, that psychology that I'm talking about there is really key to if you're going to be an intraday trader. It's very, very difficult. Uh, you have to have a lot of discipline and you just got to uh, take profits and you end up talking to yourself sometimes because you didn't do what you knew to do. And I used to joke that I only make the same mistake 55 times. So let's go in, uh, let's get out of the uh, intraday day trading mode and let's, let's, start looking at, let's start looking at some stocks and um, we, we got to look at NVIDIA. We'll start here. This is daily. I want to go to weekly. Uh, uh, this is a similar pattern to, to what we have been uh, watching uh, happen on a lot of markets, this would remind me, and I'll put it up here just to show you, is that this is very similar to what Bitcoin looks like in this pattern here, where we get this big, large consolidation. Look at the algos here. They are all projecting uh, that the moving averages are going to roll over. You can see the, the shape of the WTRs. This is all of this is calculating what the shape of this, this is what it looks like. See declining moving averages, then flattening, and then it shows declining again. It gets it gets worse. All of this will change. This is too far out in the future, but it does give you a sense for the trend. And especially in the first few bars, you're you're going to see this going down. So uh, the these indicators are I, I joke a lot. It's like having tomorrow's Wall Street. And we'll go through Tesla in a minute because the Tesla trade was super super easy. It was forecasted weeks before it happened, 
And th that's why I told you earlier that um, one of the associates said that we were, um, I, I've been telling him that I've been wanting to really put out a special video on Tesla, but it, let's let's just look at look at how crazy this move has been. We all know, but let's let's take a look at this. I just want to bring this up so you can see it. But here here's let's do some let's do a little Elliott wave here real quick. So this would be probably, oh, oh, let me make this thicker in a different color so you can see it. Okay, we're, we're looking at probably one, two, this is wave three. And I'm, we're gonna do a quick Elliott class here, but while we're doing analysis, this pattern here is one of the more bullish patterns. It's basically one of these uh, bugle patterns. Uh, it's expanding triangle, and it's an uh, A, B, C, D, E, or A, B, C, X, A, B, C. And when you get those kind of patterns, they usually do exactly what you, what you see here, is this explosive pattern up, okay? And there's one other thing that I'm going to take all this off there there's a the pattern is here was a simple abc i'm guessing probably 50 60% retracement classic elliot and then we get into we we get into this next next sequence here which is probably a running one two one two here i should put some numbers up here three complex abcd that's actually ABC, X, ABC. And this is just classic. Then maybe one, two, and this is the, the complex where this could actually be a wave four and then one more leg up. But, but uh, the reason why I developed the wave tech, when you hear wave tech, that is the combination using moving averages and the uh, PPMs to look at angle of attack and what the probabilities are. And we combined all this with Elliott Wave. And uh, there's some very, what we tried to do is demystify and simplify the key elements of the wave pattern. And then we ultimately put that into logic, which is what uh, is attempted to do is well as you can in the wave tech logic on the models and the buy sell models. But typically what a, a wave tech buy sell model would do would be to buy someone here and it would be looking to sell over here because it's primarily going to look at this trend as all of one and then it's looking for an exit. And that's why when I tell you today, I don't think we'll get an exit on NVIDIA just yet. But this is how we start to set up patterns that where we see the probabilities that the continuation of the trend is likely to end. So when you start to break things down, I simplify all of this, all these uh, steps in the middle down to simple uh, 10 period moving average, 21 period moving average, and the weekly average. And what that does, it just gives you a clear spec, uh, perspective here. Let me just, t let me take this out. Sorry about that, hit the wrong button. Uh, if I, let me take these out. And so now I'm gonna, we're gonna continue with just a lesson here for just for a minute, because I think this. Uh, 
Okay, hang on. I'm, I'm seeing some funny, um, reading some comments here. So this is, uh, in the end, all you really want to know is where where this trend is starting and where it's going to end. And easy, a lot of folks use some crossovers on moving averages and those type of things. But you can see over here is where crossovers are being made. This is where they were made down here. You can make a simple strategy just like that. But typically what happens is th these are projected values, not actual values. All, all we know right now is what, what's up there, which is this is where the moving average is, right? This is all we know for, to this last bar. All of this over here is actually, all this over here is just projections. It's not real. Okay, it's just being, this is what's being projected. And if I brought up the PPMs, you'd see the formations and the PPMs that are uh, suggesting that's what's going to happen. So all this, for me, this is what, using the indicators, the dotted line ones are the WTAR, they're uh, predictive SMA, simple moving averages, trying to predict, looking back on a 150 bar coefficient and trying to project out the future. Uh, there's not uh, the validity beyond probably five bars uh, starts to deteriorate. But as we get new information in these, you're going to see that the augles will adjust. What looks pretty negative right now could end up just to end up in you know in a box formation somewhere in here, and and everything starts to, to flatten out then as, as you go forward. So now, let me get rid of this stuff. What happens is the moving averages flatten out, the market does this, it doesn't do some big collapse. I, I don't think that's what's in store, but you probably end up here, and then all of this stuff that's being calculated ends up floating up above and going like this. So you'll see the evolution as we get new bars. Now this is a weekly, so it's gonna take you six, eight bars, two months to get there. So, um, but let's let's just do the analysis now of after the lesson, let's let's go and, and do the do the analysis here. So the algos are suggesting that we're likely to come down uh, where we've got a, another one of these multi-layer triangles that build. And I, I told you folks, I don't like trend lines. I love moving averages because I spent all, all my years doing this. But you can see this is the 10 period moving average being forecasted to roll down. This is another one of those wedges where the market's likely to come down towards the 21. And then there's even a larger wedge that is forming here. Let me clean this. So you have wedge number one under here. This is your top. And then this is wedge number two. So the ranges that we end up in come down into these patterns. There's a, a number here. I'll have to, if I can get that number, it's not on the screen. But this green dot is probably the ultimate move down. But if we did some further, as I showed you when we were thinking and looking at Elliott Wave, what we're looking at here is that the the patterns that's setting up is literally setting up for for some sort of ABC that ends up staying along this line, and we this will be the red line right now when you're in trend mode, which we are, I call that the demand line, which is that's the point where you want to buy the dips against that moving average as long as the PPM are of above 0.25. That's where you that's where you accumulate. That's where you're going to find a lot of buyers in the market. And when you have the down sloping 10, then you're going to have some resistance until that that momentum builds off, uh, blows off on the other pattern. So let's look at the values. So 
So you can see exactly that as we look out, the all goes around, everything's pointing to the mid to end of June as a bottoming pattern and possibly I've been talking to you about, uh, I think somebody came up with a really good slogan. I'm, uh, it was something like instead of selling May and go away, it was buy in May and stay the way or something like that. It was pretty good. I, I thought I put it to memory. But the what, what I'm trying to point out here, folks, is that this stuff, uh, you know, you can be a, a fanboy or fangirl and and love your stock and believe it and study all the fundamentals and tell me all day long about revenues and all these stories. In the end, uh, all the stories are told right here. And we know the story behind uh, NVIDIA and there are people that believe it's going you know, a lot higher and I, I'm one of those ultimately. But it doesn't mean that we don't get to extremes of valuation and we have to correct, consolidate. And I always say when you the pattern I was just showing you, the thing that you have to actually ask, is this a consolidation or a distribution? And a lot of times you see stocks that are look like they're consolidating, everybody go, oh, they're just consolidating and going higher. It's actually distribution where you're getting a lot of uh, new buyers and then the old owners are selling out of the pattern. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to hit that button. So, yeah, you just, those are uh, the considerations here. And in this case, I think it's probably a consolidation and probably much higher, higher prices. I think there's uh, some things coming out here fairly soon in the chip world, fairly soon, meaning next year. In 2025, I think we're going to see a lot of new things coming out. I think there's new chips. I know there's new chips coming out. There's lots. This this industry has always been very progressive in building and speed and you know calculation power. Now with the world of AI and they're building server rooms uh, at a location near you, just about everywhere, and you're seeing some really interesting things starting to pop up and the results of all this is there's just uh, still a lot of chip demand and there's chips uh, i can drive about 30 minutes from here and drive by the tsm plant at, that they're building here in arizona it's a giant thing i think it's a multi-year project my point is that the metrics of what we're likely to see should maintain in here and the, this is the beauty of stocks versus indexes, is that you do want to know your stocks. You do want to understand the momentum and not only the momentum, but the, the fundamentals behind them. That helps you to int uh, integrate those two thoughts together. And that's why we've done that. We have a, um, a screening process that we deliver out, out to you folks that if you want it. It's it's really good to combine these types of thoughts. I know it's been a lot of time on NVIDIA. I'll go a little bit past since we started late. We'll go late, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll go beyond the, uh, the, the patterns here. Uh, them quitting right at the market close. So we'll, we'll, if you hang out, I'll hang out. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look. Yeah. So I want to do one last quick look here, and we go to monthly. And I have to change the algos to get them to calculate. But you can see what we've done so far on it from a market grid standpoint. STX is six. 669 and 708 is S3. So it looks like we're we've been down to a low of 714. So we're just about to S3 on a monthly basis on NVIDIA. So we're basically at an extreme. Doesn't mean that uh, what will probably happen when we get the monthly update two weeks away. We'll probably see the market grid turn down, which will give us a little more downside. And there's a pivot number right here that I want to show you at four. Let me make sure it's right number 451. 
is a, a big, big pivot number. So I don't think we get that low, but we're definitely going to see some some lower prices. And just looking at 10-month moving average is the most likely target here, which would be 541. And that's rising. Let me just see what it's rising. So it'll be 580. We'll call it 620, 580. Probably going to be the bottom end. And that's going to be in this May to June period. So I want to summarize what I keep seeing here, and I just want you folks to understand this, is that it looks to me that we're going to see negative markets, negative cash flow into the markets, otherwise money coming out. Why not put it in T-bills at 5-2? Great deal, right? You can't beat it. But that is going to continue to happen on a lot of these major stocks and the indices, all that stuff. I could literally spend three hours going through this stuff with you folks. And back in the day, uh, it will. So um, I, I love all. Um, yeah, let's take a look. Uh, what's, let me look at what's going on. Yeah, we're down to 93 here on the futures. Let me go back. Yeah, we're down to 93. This thing just... Just printing down. And this is what, by the way, if we go back over and let's go to trading view. If we come back over here and go to ES and go to hourly, this is what the hourly is, is projecting is for Lower prices, you can see market grid turned down. We closed right on the market grid. We're, we're not quite in the new lows. 92, let me see here. Yeah, we did print a new low this hour. So we're continuing to see this. And that's why the algos are just telling you down downward into the close. And I, once again, am sticking with the, the concept that we're really looking at uh, liquidation ahead of a long weekend. No one wants to trust whether Israel or Iran or who's going to do what. Notice how we pivoted away from the Ukraine. I don't know if you folks noticed that. Kind of interesting. Yeah, and that that is what was uh, forecasted. Just looking at some stuff here on the, on the line. All right. Um, we got to look at Apple. Let's do a couple stocks. I'm just going to go for go for a little bit of a run here. This is a one hour Apple, but let's go to a weekly. Pretty ugly. I talked about this. I think the last time I brought up Apple is we've just got a, a lot of negativeness, but you're going to find this really interesting, or I am anyway, and I'll try to make it interesting to you. If we look at this chart here, there are there's a pretty decent V bottom setup, and if we look at the market grid right now, this is a weekly Apple chart. Let's just bring that up. We are well below the extreme on the market grid. 170.19. The last trade here is 165.01, low 64.08. And this is a weekly chart. So what's going to happen is the market grid is going to turn down. We're going to get an uh, STX buy signal. And I told you STX buys are better than RTX sells, but they the RTX has to be respected as well. But this will suggest sideways to up for one, maybe two weeks, okay? So this is a good sign. We also, look at this, we're very close to printing. Fib target two was 162.78. Uh, that first was forecasted when the market was 182. So these forecasts have been in play since February 20th. And and I remember talking about this last time I reviewed this, but we're definitely coming down. If we look at, uh, now let's go to the PPMs, and I, I want to, I'm going to bring this up real, real quick. 
This is one of those uh, V bottoms that I'm always talking about. Okay, we'll see. This is on a weekly basis too. So let's take a let's take a quick look at this. Now I will draw these in. So right here, you've got. This is a forecast over here. I have to switch tools, so let me let me just uh, so we want to look for these type of things, and then you get the then the forecast here is for the PPM to rocket up. Typically, this pattern right here will result in a a, a buy pattern, but we have two things. You know, I love clustered ideas. So we have the V bottom being forecasted, and then we also have an STX buy signal happening weekly. So let's see if we can break this down in Apple, and we'll do some analysis. I want to teach you, those of you who have the indicators, how to take a look and let's validate and see if this is a good idea. Right now, it looks like a, a, fairly, a fairly good idea. So let's, let's break it down. So we also have a little turn up on PPM2. PPM3 is showing that it's going to stabilize. But we got to look at some values here. And the value is minus 1.34. And this was this actually happened in Tesla. I think what I'll do is I'll go through Tesla analysis after this. And yeah, we'll probably touch on gold, Mark. Um, but the... Um, This this pattern, we need to see if we can validate, see if there's any other things that are going to lead us to a, a potential little bounce. But here is the ceiling for this is going to be that 10-period moving average. The 10-period moving average is right now 174, and it's declining about $2 per week. So one we'll call it 170, 172. The market were to bounce back there, you could probably there's probably a trade there, but we're going to go to the daily chart, see if we can pick up anything that gives us any confidence here. Let's go over to the daily. All right, not, not terrible. Uh, we don't have the V bottom here, but we do have a V bottom on PPM two. We have a V set up down here. You see where my cursor is uh, on PPM three. But it looks like we're going to be a bit under pressure and probably all the way into next week. So what we what we want to do is watch for this daily chart to bottom. And then once we get the V, which looks like Thursday, Friday next week, then we can actually step in and probably trade that market up to wherever that low is at the time. Yeah, we should be able to trade it up. So we'll probably see a lower low coming in on a weekly. This is my analysis. Just even though we've got the V, that doesn't mean it just goes straight up, but it means that we we will go to an S1, um, maybe S2 tops on on the on Apple, and then we get a bounce from there, and then we can set this up. But we wait for this daily trade to come back into focus. And uh, the next level beyond that would be uh, look for a buy signal if you're using WaveTech on uh, 1.2 daily on WaveTech. That would give you also extra confidence. You might be able to do partial position, trying to be aggressive at at when this turns up. And then the other one, once you get the confirmation on the P, uh, wave tech, then you can come in with a second tranche. Okay, so um, let's go and let's go and do Tesla. This is a weekly Tesla. When we were over here, I'll show you in a minute. Back in December. When this big decline started, this was uh, pretty evident on on the indicators were rolling over pretty good. And now, now we're printing, but this is the other thing on Tesla. We are getting an RTX, I'm sorry, STX buy signal here, just like with Apple. So a lot of these symbols have exceeded down 
and they're they're breaking down, but then we get the I call it an echo bounce where you get a big move and then you get a, a move back that goes 30. 0.382, 0 0.5, it doesn't have to be Fibonacci numbers, but it bounces back into the range and then it continues on. But that's probably the same sort of trade. Let's look. So we don't have a clean V uh, bottom on Tesla. What we have is a maintenance of a very negative downtrend on the PPM1, which says that the Moving average, the 10 period moving average will be your resistance. That's 176 right now, and it's declining. It's going to be 170 on about 171, 170 range on Monday when we come in. So that's going to be your resistance. That's going to be a rejection point. I don't think I just blindly jump in there and buy this one. But Apple looks like a pretty decent setup. But even then, it's suggesting sometime between next Wednesday and, and Friday. And I'm not sure when earnings and uh, coming out. We do know earnings is coming out on Tesla here, uh, fairly fairly quick. So that that's something that will uh, we get earnings. I think on Tuesday. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, somebody um, new PPM stands for price pressure momentum. It's um, yeah. We'll have to uh, be. A, Yeah, um, yeah, we'll talk maybe a little bit about that. I'll try to set set this up. But these PPMs are measuring the angle of attack of the moving average. So it tells you probabilities of the market rising above or staying above, depending on the trend. In this case, it's staying below, as we have negative trends uh, right now, which is pretty amazing. On Tesla, it's minus 2.57. And minimal, what we're seeing here on the forecast, though, is that it's going to maintain that strong downtrend. So I ultimately think at some stage, we got to go back to June of 23 and probably test the 101 level. I see people on TV, uh, and a couple analysts, and I saw a really good argument. I meant to save it. It was on, I, I think it, it might have been, a YouTube short, but it's this guy that's uh, pretty pretty aggressive. That's on, <clears throat> excuse me, on CNBC. But he was in an argument with some woman. He was just he was just shredding uh, Elon over a bunch of stuff. But more importantly, it, he made some really good points talking about some of the issues with with Tesla, and he sounded like uh, sounded a lot like me talking about it because there's there's just uh, you know a lot of a lot of issues corporately. We just saw the layoffs. I think there'll be more coming. And we're seeing everybody, you know, GM shutting down, Ford shutting down their EV stuff. It's just not working in spite of what's going on. Um, yeah, we do have uh, training videos that come with the, uh, the indicators. Uh, Chris, there's a lot there. Yeah, so uh, just so you know, the, the the trading view indicators that I'm showing you are not a subscription. You own them forever. You buy them, you own them. Uh, they're four ninety seven. dollars Go to kendallreport.com slash um, indicators, and there's, I think, a 38-minute video there that you can watch that I go through some analysis there as well. And... Um, yeah, there's a lot. And like I said, uh, if you weren't around earlier, I'm most likely going to launch another channel, which will be the WaveTech channel. It won't be daily videos or anything, but it will be focused at training, use, things like what I'm I'm mixing and blending. We did a little trading today. We did, we, we've done a lot. So this is pretty typical uh, hanging out, hanging around with the mad scientists. So uh, the best thing, Yeah, there is a complete uh, two-day seminar that's out there uh, that I did back in November. Yeah, so uh, Sid's act absolutely right here, just talking indicators for a minute, is that um, you really have to uh, 
uh, there's some study to understand a lot of the nuances, and I try to point out a lot of things. The beauty is, and I t tell everybody, if you're just looking to manage money and do that, the WaveTech system, I built all of the things that I show you and these indicators I use are the breakdown what's internally involved in the software and the decision process. And in the decision process, there's 60, 60 basic executable rules with over 600 variables that gets looked at every day. And we run 10, I think it's something like 10.1 million calculations every day on the software. So when I talk about our database and all, that's a result of a lot of, a lot of math going on in these stocks and determining whether they're trending or non-trending. And that's why when I showed you the the wave tech stuff where the 11 percent so nine out of ten stocks have of of 15,000 symbols in our database have no trend right now and if you've been around for a little while you know that was in the 80 percentile range not that long ago when we were rallying and it goes back to i believe april 4th where we saw 3,000, 3,700 symbols uh, sold out. Then we saw 4,400 like three days later. So early in April, we've been puking out stocks on a short-term basis. So, um, but that's the result. But these indicators are things that you can use for day trading and all that. It's unfortunate that TradeStation used to have a way to distribute your indicators and they closed down that that access. So uh, otherwise you could use our models on um, intraday as well. I can tell you I've had a project laying idle for two weeks because I haven't been able to get to it that we actually are, uh, okay, there's a close on the market. There we go. Down up, 03 close, 03 close. So uh, like I said, I'll, I'll keep going since I got a late start. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So all of the all of this stuff that you see, I only use my my indicators. I haven't used an RSI, a stochastics, any of that stuff since around maybe 1983. I'm old. Okay, I've been doing this for a very long time, and I've had. Um, you can look it up. It's in the archives. Uh, you can look at CompuTrack was one of the very first programs that you could actually look at charts similar to this. Uh, you could put multiple charts. You could actually, they let you build your own indicators. That's when we built them back in 1983 and 84. We developed the PPMs on CompuTrack. Uh, there's a guy named Tim Slater, who is the founder of CompuTrack. He's out there still around. We're all very old now, but uh, he, he was a facilitator of awful lot of us, including Larry Williams and a whole bunch of other guys. Uh, I've been on seminar circuits with Larry and all the guys way back when in the 80s. So I was fortunate enough to be a pretty young guy and be invited to that party. And, you know, uh, everybody chaking, uh, every, everybody was there, I tell you. So um, I was probably the least known person there. <laughs> so anyway, but my the the point of all this is these indicators are proprietary from the standpoint of actually looking at how how the market works around moving averages. And I've said this before since we got it, and we're at the end. We'll do a couple more stocks, but this uh, process that we have uh, right now it's it's been you know this is. Hard to believe it's, you know, 2024 and we're talking 1984, so 40 years ago when a lot of this was actually developed and it's run my entire career. I've been involved in institutional money, hedge funds, floor trading, and helping investment advisors for decades to manage their customer accounts. So. I've done a lot of this, plus been very involved in in trading all along. So, yeah, I I'm old. I'm a boomer. I get I see guys uh, telling me to go away. You you need me more than you know. So, um, uh, yeah, you know I I don't I don't feel that old. <laughs> so anyway.
but but you know I know I am. I, I've seen I've seen a lot more than a lot of folks. I saw a great quote the other day: "When we're young, we don't know what we don't know." <laughs> so it's uh, uh, very much so. Yeah, if you. Uh, put, yeah, I would put up uh, for that link that just was put up, put up uh, kendallreport.com slash indicators. Um, yeah, you just, that's all you need. Yeah, it should work every time. There's, it depends on some browsers. I've seen some stuff. We use a company called ClickFunnels. I'm just reading some comments here. No, I appreciate that, Darren. Yeah, Tesla, I just said Tesla will probably rise. We got an STX buy signal. Probably go up for sideways up for two weeks. I'm just looking at some comments here. Yeah, John. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, so uh, this is the thing, Jagan, for, um, for the indicators, uh, y you can use a free version and you probably, probably could, if you have multiple emails, probably set up multiple frees if you had to, uh, but we won't be able to deliver them. But y I think you only put on a free three indicators up at a time, maybe four. And uh, I think the cheapest version, I forget what it's called, the pro version is what we suggest you get. And that's probably the best because you can do all the intraday stuff. Yeah, I did go over NVIDIA, so you'll have to go back on a replay. Uh, we went through quite a bit of detail there. Um, what else do we do here? It's 106. Yeah, well, free is two now, somebody just said. So, yeah. So you could put up market grid and maybe the PPM 200 if you're trading intraday, but you're probably not going to be doing that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I always call it the uh, Flags Garage. I always, I'm going to do a video, and I, I hope I can get this maybe maybe done. I don't think it's going to take me that long, but I want to do about a 10, 12-minute video and really put the bars out and describe this three-bar chart. So we need to go through that probably right now while that's coming up. And um, the, the uh, probabilities in that three-bar chart are low in percentage wins. But when it works, it works big, but it is very low risk trade. And that's why it's so good. And I'm, I figured that one out. I think it was like 1982. I mean, we're talking 40 years I've been using this thing. And I always do the three bar play. And we just had one. So let's, let's uh, take a look at, let's put ES weekly up. There's weekly. See if we can blow this up. So. We have, uh, we have one more bar in here. The only, only thing I'm, I'm wondering is if it's not really, uh, really close. You might give back a lot of trade. The weekly is a bit different. You see, we got. Uh, let me. I'm going to draw this up for you, so we can go through this. So the, the premise of the three bar trade starts with an outside bar. And most importantly, a key reversal. And a key reversal happens at a top or a bottom of a sequence. Okay, so let's let's do this. And I'll show you how this trade sets up. So here is the reversal. There was a higher high than this bar here and a lower low. You can see it was a very narrow bar. And so we got the setup. So the deal was, you're supposed to sell the next opening. And this is a weekly chart. So it's a, a dependent, this will work on a five minute chart, any length. Five minute charts are gonna have lower probabilities of win, but still very 
uh, very low risk to do them. I found them best hourly reversals, daily, weekly is work if you got the guts to keep them on. It takes a lot because you're sitting there for a whole week waiting for the answer on each one of these bars. So the three-day um, trade starts with an outside reversal. The next open, especially if it's higher, you sell. If if you want to try to get tricky, you can. If it's a top reversal, then you you want to let it rally a little bit and then sell, and then you get a better position. And the criteria is that it has to make a new low. Um, on on that from the reversal week and that would be this this bar right here and let me clean this up so you can see it so this is the reversal bar this is the opening bar and the deal is this if it doesn't close lower and make a lower low than this reversal bar then you're out you exit so no new low on the next bar, you exit on the, um, and you can't make a new high, okay? So let me take this off and I'll set up the next bar. And I'm, I'm gonna make a, a video on this. I'm, I'm sure this is actually a pretty good one. So, so this bar, we got the confirmation with the close here. The next bar cannot make a new high. So the previous day, previous bar, whatever that is, uh, that high is your stop point. So if it takes out that high, then it, the trade's no good. So we also need to make a new low on this bar here, which we got this week. So this is actually the, uh, you can count from the entry bar, this is only two weeks. So there's theoretically at least one more week and as many as two more weeks. And I, I would only argue that if you bring the PPMs in, is that the the goal? I, I remember talking about when we this trade when it came out a couple of weeks ago. The goal was to get to the 21 week moving average. We just did that, and so we're so uh, finishing right on it. The 21 is like 84. We went out at uh, 5,002. So 49.84 is that, and it's it's not going to change at all because it's a monthly it won't update for another two weeks but we basically hit what we thought the objective was so i would i would argue in this particular trade you could take profits and that would be kind of a a nuance that you can throw in is that if it hits a target range which is a key moving average or some other element that you know is significant that you can take profits in there but let's just play it out so the next bar this is this is what has to happen. We have to make a lower low from this week, which means we print below on this chart 49.63, and we do not have to close lower. We just can't take out the high from the previous week, which that's a crazy number. I, I can't get to the numbers right now, but that's probably not gonna happen. But you could have a lower low and it close higher. And we are, like I said, I'm stacking up other analysis here but I'm putting in that we got an SDX buy signal just now. And so it looks like all these, the um, stocks. Yeah, look at it, Floyd, you're awesome, man. Uh, so this is the deal. Okay, let's say we get the lower low next week. The There's two exit, you exit, uh, you can do two exit on the fourth bar. So the, we have three, we'd have one more bar, so we're, in this case, going a week out, but the next bar, you even exit on the open, or you can be more aggressive and exit on a new low. So if the if the next bar makes a new low, you just take it off and you're out. So let's let's just review uh, something here that I just said. So this is the, this is the big deal. So let's say it's just we're going to make it a daily bar instead of what we went to. The first day you get the reversal. Next day you have to make a lower low, close lower. If you close higher, you're out. If you make a new high, you've stopped out. By the way, those outside reversals very seldom, if they're at a key level, actually get stopped out. So you even are out because it didn't close lower or you're out because it also didn't make a lower low. And then day two, you need to make a lower low, can't take out the previous day high. 
And, and in day two, you don't even have to close lower. There's no requirement there. Every bar after that first bar that you close lower, you just can't take out the previous day high. You have to make a lower low on each day. And then from there, you um, um, when you get to that third bar, if you make on the fourth bar a new low, you even exit there, or you can exit on the open of the fourth bar, depending on what kind of numbers are out there. So uh, just now, that's the basic setup. And that can happen five minute, 10 minute, hourly, weekly, monthly. As I was talking the other day, we we're getting a monthly pattern. And if you go back to 20, the beginning of uh, 2022, uh, you, were, you will recall that we got an outside reversal on a monthly. And then I took that to the next level. We get an outside reversal on a quarterly. So the first quarter of 22 was an outside reversal. And we got confirmation all along the board on the monthly. And then we got, uh, we got an outside bar on a quarterly chart, which led to uh, a confirmation on second quarter and third quarter was the bottom. So we basically had two to three bars in that pattern, and that came into the, the lows that started to set up for the rally of 2023. So these patterns can be really useful in understanding how to manage um, your expectations in these larger patterns. And, and just a simple bar, I, I, I'm not a big fan of candlesticks. Uh, Steve Nissan, and, and that is a famous for candlesticks. He and I worked at Merrill Lynch together when he was writing the first book. I was I was one of the only people with their own newsletter within Merrill Lynch, and Steve was uh, one of uh, one of many that had written books but had approval to write the candlestick book. Uh, that was that would have been what 1990. I'm trying to think, 90, I think is the right number. So, um, yeah, so I just like bar charts. I'm old fashioned. You know, I grew up in a world where there was something called commodity perspective. It was a chart book. We'd buy these books. They were good for two weeks and we had to draw every market. It was it was uh, just for commodities. And then they had them for stocks, too. But we would draw in what the stock did and look at it. And people would draw trend lines. And on the commodity perspective, we all had our own books. You make notes. I mean, I would love to see uh, have some of those old books that uh, that was when I was learning a lot of stuff then, and it it, it drops. I'm, I'm just going to continue in this educational mode here for a minute. It drops into what I've always told people to do is to journal around your work and your experience with the markets. You know, if you had a bad trade, that's okay. Just Journal, find out, uh, go through and dissect everything you did, and make sure you don't do that trade again. That's what it. That's how. You, that's how you get better. I used to always say, the art of becoming a good trader is eliminating the bad decisions that you make. And as you d delete more of the bad things that you do, the better you get. And ultimately, you still do bad things. No, no one gets around that. Uh, but the realities are, is that you perfect yourself, but if you journal and you write what happened on, on these trades, especially anything specific, uh, I used to have these amazing journals, all that stuff's gone. I, I have a couple artifacts I do anything to have today. It just wasn't, uh, unfortunately I didn't, I, one of them, I, uh, some of this stuff got lost in, in a move that I made many, many years ago, uh, back in the early 90s, which was, pretty discouraging. I don't know how it happened because they were precious to me. But there's a lot of stuff I wish I had that uh, that I could share with people. But um, I do still have the knowledge that was that was achieved by going through these processes that I tell you folks. And if you if you are very articulate, if you're really serious, see, I, I got to be uh, lucky in the world I live in because That that was my day job, so my day job was this. Well, how how much better? I know I know a lot of you folks that you um, um, 
have day jobs. You have other things you do. I was so lucky. I feel so blessed to have spent, you know, 40, 44 plus years in uh, doing this for a day job. It's been one of the best things I've ever done. And it's been so amazing. Uh, but the only way you're going to get there is to be really serious about it. And if you make mistakes, don't just pout. Write down what you did. See if you can identify uh, what they did. So I'm I'm going to bring in one more thing. I'm kind of on a little run here, but I was uh, invited to a congregation of of ten traders. That all of this was supposed to be pretty good. Uh, their first um, market wizards book. If you've read those, Ed Sakota. I was invited to Ed Sakota's house, and we did an exercise, which I'll share with you. And if you have groups, you can now do these things online. It used to be a big deal. But we all got together in Ed's house for a weekend in Lake Tahoe. All our wives thought we were gambling and chasing uh, chasing girls. We weren't. We were nerds. We were in, in, a, in a room talking about trading till 2 and 3 in the morning. And what we did was this, as we had... Um, we got a group of people that were trying to achieve. Um, matter of fact, maybe I should run one of these, I'm telling you. Uh, but we would basically, it was a circle, and we would sit around, and one guy had to present what, the bring the last 10 trades, good and bad, that you have, explain what your basic process was and how you entered, how you exited, and it, you had to deliver that in roughly 20 minutes. And then once you did that, everybody would break up in groups of two in the groups, and they would discuss what you just said. And each person would go around that circle then and critique the speaker and what they thought was good and bad. And we did that uh, for 10 of us. And that little routine of present, uh, get together in groups, and then go in each individual would go around the circle that little deal was about two hours of of going through that particular situation, uh, whatever it was trading and all that stuff. Uh, what I garnered from that experience was that that's where you really get into deep thought and even to the point where you're interacting with somebody critiquing you and explaining them, a lot of things came up. Some of the things were confirmational that, hey, I'm doing it right. And other things were like, wow, I should have thought about that. But the learning experience was intense and very, very good. And I took that to other, I had a, a, a sales group that I ran uh, for my firm. We had, uh, we, we had uh, a groups that were managing different types of uh of hedge funds and other things that we that we were working with. So we use that process, but I'll share that because that's something that was really significant. And if you do have a group of people that doesn't have to be 10, but I think five or six people and make it a study group, you can do some pretty amazing work. And I, I need to actually break that down. There's a lot of stuff I would like to uh, give to you. So, um, I promise somebody, if you're still around, I'm going to go, we'll go back to analysis for a minute. We'll do gold and and then we'll we'll call it quit. So uh, these Fridays, uh, they're almost like fireside talks. I, uh, my son used to uh, do fireside talks for way tech people. So that's kind of what this has uh, become. So let's take a quick look at gold as we set up. I'll cover it in detail on on Sunday as well as in the Monday Substack. But let's go take a look. So a couple things I talk about a lot is these volatility bubbles that come and we have to consolidate. We're in the process of consolidating. Looks to me, based on the algos, we're just going to be locked in a range. We managed to print up pretty good numbers. And this is probably overnight that this, yeah, this is this uh, daily. This is last night, gold, uh, crude oil, everybody reacted to this news on Israel and Iran. and. You know, and then it all came back in because it wasn't 
I'm not sure what happened. I have, like I said, I haven't followed any of the news after that since the uh, um, since last night. So I don't really know what what's going on there. But the it looks to me that we're going into consolidation range. We satisfy these Fib targets. This is daily, and we look at the PPMs. They're all showing the same thing that we're likely to get. These are really, while they're looking like they're going down, we're really looking at just sideways movement. 21 period moving average, big number. Uh, 20, 2306, that number's rising. That's somewhere down in that handle is going to be the big one. And let's go to a weekly, and then I think we'll come back and call it quits. So weekly, we, we satisfied FIB target two here. That number was 24.50. I think we traded 48 right here. This was 20, yeah, 24.48.80. So we basically uh, tagged that FIB target. All goes all showing loss of momentum really sideways into these moving averages. And you're looking at most likely the, the low of this week or a little bit lower, um, maybe down into... 2370 is going to be the low. We could continue to move sideways into uh, as we go out here, but this is a weekly chart, so looking at four or six weeks out. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed today. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I appreciate uh, that, Andrew. Um, now it's just pure technical. Uh, I don't get in. I have no idea what fundamentals of Bitcoin is. You know, um, I think we go. I mentioned this in last night's Substack. We go from being a risk asset to an alternative asset, and you don't know when that character of that of the coin is going to show that. So it's very random, very nuanced. And you just don't know what the next response is. So that basically that equation equals volatility. And that's what you get out of Bitcoin for sure. But I appreciate that comment. Um, yeah. Oh, Roger, man, are you on it? Uh, listen to this. Um, our goal is to take every video I have done, turn it into text build our own GPT and build a model um, LMM, LMM to uh, just for ask Bob anything and try to build a database from it. <laughs> FF, you're funny. I know you hate Bitcoin. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of the comments before we leave. Yeah, and just to make sure I answered this, uh, there's a, a comment here that um, about the three weeks down and and then we've got, I, I think I made that really clear. Uh, problem is we've been on for a couple hours and it's difficult to kind of tie this down. But um, yeah, I, I, I think that's great. That's great. Who, who said that? Um, yeah, that, that's my goal. I, there's a lot of stuff I want to garner. I think we have, I don't know, 1,200, 1,400 videos that I've done in the last four years. So there's a ton of these, and unfortunately, folks, and I do mean this unfortunately, is that when I get into these educational moments that they're not easy to find. It's a haystack uh, because these things come out randomly when I'm doing analysis. So I just dump them out there. There's got to be a way at some point to be able to harvest that because I, I think that's where uh, the value in a lot of things that I've done, especially in legacy, uh, using indicators, all that stuff. I embed little lessons all the time. So, you know, not everybody has a couple hours to hang out. So anyway, appreciate everybody that did. We had uh, 
uh, our audience is getting a little bigger. I miss the days when, uh, actually, I don't miss the days because back in the pandemic days, we would get, uh, you know, 1,000, 1,200 live at a time, which was a reasonable number. Uh, but I'll take 300 in normal times, especially on a Friday. Anyway, folks, uh, let me look and see. Yeah. Um, just looking at last... Uh, couple of comments here just see I won't I won't talk uh, Floyd's garage um, yeah I wouldn't be surprised on the uh, the C people if that's the case yeah uh, uh, Darren I agree I those are the things, like I said, I'm most likely going to, I already have a channel, but there's nothing on it, I don't think. But I'm going to do a secondary channel with WaveTech, and it's going to be really focused where I'll take, okay, this is what I'm going to talk about. And they won't be live streams, they'll be produced. I'll go through and edit them and, and set them up a little better so we have more, maybe a, more of a, a classroom type environment uh, that you can learn from. But I, I appreciate it, everybody that uh, came today. So don't forget, if you don't have the indicators, get them, kindlereport.com slash indicators. And you can also get the Substack newsletter, kindlereport.com slash newsletter. So have a great weekend. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you Sunday night, even in live or in a produced video. I'm not sure how it'll end up that that's always kind of up in the air every weekend. So folks, have a great one. We'll talk to you on Sunday night.